welcome to growing your own food in your own backyard and if you are new to my channel please consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the like button I want to talk about tips and thinning out and harvesting my overgrown sage over the spring we have had a lot of rain and cool temperatures over the past two months so my sage grew fast now it's time to thin and harvest my overgrown sage so what I want to do and I want to just basically assess the plant so I'm just gonna kind of assess the plant you can see it overgrew all my onions and it's trying to grow into the strawberry bush and it's trying to grow into my tomato plants so I have assessed the plant examining the sage plant to determine which stems or branches need to be thin out I'll look for the older woody stems or those that are crowded or crossing over each other this is the best time to do this because it's early summer late spring is another reason also I've already cleaned out my tools so right now I'm just gonna start just thinning out the sage so as you can see a lot of it's on this woody branch here so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna start cutting back on this woody branch like this okay and then I'm gonna also go back over here and you can see how woody how this bottom here is really woody that's what I'm gonna cut out right now and I'm gonna do it on the outskirts of the plant and then I also all this right here is woody so I'm gonna have to cut this all back right here so I'll just cut this all back like this and trust me this hard pruning is not gonna hurt the sage because I have so much of it and it's literally overgrown again it's because of all that beautiful rain we got basically for two months and um, and it was always wet and cool outside so I never really had a chance to get out here and prune it so you can see this um, this woody part here that's the part I want to cut out so I'm gonna go ahead and trim that okay so you can see I've, I've exposed this part of my bed now my onions are gonna get sunlight and I'm gonna be able to keep those onions growing so I'm just gonna go around here really quickly and cut out the flowering because I don't want the sage to go to seed and so you can see where I have a lot of flowers here now I have already cut out some of the flowers earlier because I didn't want the sage to go to seed but I did not thin it out like I'm doing right now okay so I've cleaned up this bit a little bit now I need to go over here and also start trying to clean this out so you can see I've got a lot of a lot of woodiness here but this is where some of the new growth is um, occurring but again it's trying to grow into my strawberries so I'm gonna have to do a, a hard pruning and try to get rid of some of this woody plant the wood the woody part of the plant and thin it out and this is a perennial in zone 5b so it comes back every year this sage is approximately three years old and to be honest with you I was actually amazed at how much growth it got in the third year again I do contribute it to all the rain we received two months we were getting rain almost every day and the sage loved it so now I've got a lot more room between the sage and my strawberry patch all right so the next thing I want to do is continue with the thinning and I again I want to cut out all the flowers you can see this goes all the way down here because I don't want the sage to go to seed in fall 
If I do get another set of flowers, then I'll let it go to seed. But I have so much um, sage, it really wouldn't matter. So I'm just gonna cut out the flowers right now. The flowering part of the I should say. Actually, I have never had to thin out my sage like this. This is the first time I've had to do that. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and work on this side of the plant. So here's some scragglies here. I'm gonna cut back. You see all that new growth coming out of that woody part of the sage? So I'm getting new growth here, right here. So I'm not gonna cut that down. But I do need to thin this out so it's not growing into my tomato plants because these are my tomato plants. I do keep these covered because these are considered nightshade plants and you, they can get pretty wormy with the butterflies putting, laying their eggs on the plants and you're going to get tomato hornworms and also we got um, grasshopper issues uh, here. So um, I want to keep the critters from feeding on the plant. So again, I'm just cutting this back here. Pruning is going to stimulate growth before the, uh, before the summer is over with, so I'm, I'm not concerned about trimming off this new growth. Okay. So now I have a pretty neat sage shrub that doesn't look overgrown. I've got the flowers cut off. So give it a signal to go to seed. Here's my tips on what it took to thin out this sage plant. and to make space for my tomato plants, my onions, and my strawberry patch. Now just cleaned it up a little. <coughs> now you can see the results of the sage. Here's the results of my sage. And here's a lot of the woody parts of the sage. So as you can see, that's a lot. So now the sage has been thinned out. I've removed a lot of the crowded branches. I identified branches that are overcrowded or crossing each other and selectively pruned them to create space for better circulation and sunlight penetration. Now I'm gonna be harvesting a lot of the sage leaf and to harvest sage leaves, I locate healthy mature leaves on the plant, cut the stems just above a leaf mode or where the stems meet other stems. This encourages a bushier growth and allows the plant to continue producing more growth. Now I wanna share with you another way of utilizing your sage plant. It's um, the sage rolls, that's what it is. In, I use this to keep the mosquitoes away. So when I want to set out on my patio and I want to relax and I don't want to be eaten alive, I just put this in a little container and I hold, set it upright and I burn it. It puts out a nice aroma and it keeps the mosquitoes away. It's actually the smoke that keeps the mosquitoes away, but it also produces a nice aroma. And it's nothing fancy. I just get a thin rope grab a couple of branches, wrap the rope around it, let it dry out. It takes about two or three days for it to dry out. And when I did this, the sage was still wet because we had a lot of um, rain, as I noted earlier. And then I have another use for all of the sage that I've harvested. I'm not gonna throw this away. I'm actually gonna make sage rolls, probably give them away as gifts. 
uh, give some of the excess away, try to help people to understand that this is another option to keep the mosquitoes away. And plus, I'm gonna dry it out and create sage, nice sage seasoning, and also provide that as Christmas gifts. So I just wanted to take you along and um, share with you what I had to do to thin out my sage plant that had overgrown. Again, it was three years old. And due to all the rain, which it was loving it, it literally overgrown. So this is my tips on how to thin out your sage, different ways of harvesting that. If you wanna have a sage seasoning, if you have too much of it, you can store it, give it as a gift, and also making sage roll try, to try to help eliminate mosquitoes around your, around the area of your backyard where you're relaxing. So I hope you like the video. If you have any experience of harvesting or thinning out your sage, please share it. I'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you.